Excellence assessment based on uh, subject matter experts in the context of an organization that operates as an ecosystem with um, vibrant dynamicity and constant disruption and transformation would mean that the assessment approach will have to be uh, redefined in order to reflect the current state of uh, business organization behavior, but also in terms of what is required and who is best qualified uh, to undertake the important task of uh, assessing excellence in a snapshot uh, relative perspective, but reflecting a constant evolution, uh, development uh, and uh, transformation. So we need to understand, therefore, what is new and different uh, from the classic and conventional approach to organizational assessment and how best uh, to approach the assessment of organizations um, using uh, a disruption uh, as a challenge and developing, therefore, the relevance of uh, assessment that can help propel an organization forward and accelerate its momentum towards achieving a leading position. As uh, this uh, example says, um, perhaps at the basic level, an assessment has to be based on sound judgment, uh, on perspicacity in terms of identifying really what matters using logic, uh, using a horse sense, using reason, but more importantly, using common sense. But sometimes common sense gets lost in um, detail by doing micro analysis and by putting blinkers to really seeing how the dynamicity of an organization operates. So in a sense, um, an excellence uh, assessment exercise through the engagement of subject matter experts requires a lot of uh, capacity and uh, a lot of uh, unique characteristics that professionals um, well equipped to carry out this assessment must have. The basic level is experience, the wider, broader richer experience, the better it is. Exposure is the variety uh, aspect of uh, uh, living uh, experiences in the context of different sectors, different organizational setup, uh, observing different uh, dynamic behaviors uh, and working in different cultural uh, contexts. Subject matter experts must have the mastery of knowledge in their fields of expertise. They must be current in their thinking and they must be aware of the latest developments. They must be confident about prescribing what is relevant, what is current, what is thoughtful, what can be customized and uh, what can be considered to be a good standard and also relied upon as a good suggestion. SMEs at the top level um, could be considered individuals who have original thinking, 
they have pioneered and they have developed their own uh, prescriptive uh, recipes uh, for helping guide organizational excellence. And also the cumulative aspect uh, of um, value contribution coming from SMEs is the rich insight they bring in from uh, their direct experiences, their indirect exposure and the knowledge and expertise accumulated uh, in a lifetime. Going back to understanding really the business ecosystem um, needs, this useful diagram uh, from Deloitte demonstrates the different levels of depth and rigor that need to be taken into account during an assessment exercise. The basic level is really to validate that the fundamentals are right, the critical capabilities are available to drive transformation and to uh, accelerate the pace of development, but also to see that solutions are implemented and capabilities are implemented beyond the formulation and design perspective. The second level in terms of depth of rigor of organizational dynamics is really to see how value is being created and how the value chain is uh, being made seamless within the organization and connected externally. And this connectivity is also vertical to reflect that strategy being clearly defined as an ambitious program with an inspiring vision is 100% reliant on capabilities and with the total confidence that value creation uh, can happen in the prescribed fashion and can impact uh, the end vis-a-vis uh, -vis the customer, the, the recipient of value. The third level of rigor is how the dynamicity works in terms of exploiting opportunities, in terms of uh, enabling through a digital means and causing transformation and changing the constraints in terms of uh, uh, regulations, policies, so that the organization can continue its path uh, of success uh, and with the ultimate goal of achieving a leading position. Perhaps at the highest level is an organization that is transformational, a learning organization, one that really looks at uh, its setup as a relative uh, positioning and constantly redefining the boundaries and exploring uncharted frontiers uh, through future foresight, uh, through exploiting opportunities, through being prescriptive about its future. In a sense, the level of insight that is required to understand the dynamicity of an organization operating in the digital age is similar to the plan, do, check, act, PDCA cycle, which unfortunately will have little relevance in the context of um, a disruptive age. The insight is constant learning and the collection of uh, information and data on what has been observed and um, uh, the mapping of the dynamics uh, of uh, operations and behavior. The analysis is really understanding what those dynamics are telling us about the behavior and the effectiveness of guiding the organization in a healthy way. And the third stage is really starting to gain an insight uh, by taking appropriate action embedding solutions and learning about uh, building capabilities, optimizing processes, uh, delivering distinctiveness and predicting the path of success with full confidence on this constant cycle of collect, analyze, interpret and uh, respond. These small scale actionable insights will cumulatively give 
the depth of insight within the organization and will allow, start to allow managers to understand what it takes to steer their organizations to a high levels of success in a safe manner. And the SMEs will be using uh, a similar mindset on a small scale, but will understand what the overall behavioral mindset uh, looks like because of their rich uh, um, external insight gained over the years. The model that is suggested therefore is one that characterizes the role of a subject matter expert um, assessing and exercising sound judgment, professional judgment in the context of uh, a transformational orientation and uh, an organization that is modern, that is current in its thinking, that is uh, aspiring to achieve a leading position. There are five levels of scrutiny that uh, an excellent SME will um, undertake. At the baseline is a look at the level of inspiration from the point of view of top management paying attention to the fundamentals of quality by creating a culture of quality where quality is emphasized at all levels and where it is mandatory for everyone to articulate quality because it uh, defines the purpose of the organization. The second level of scrutiny uh, that uh, SMEs are expected to uh, deliver is the degree to which the organization is truly customer oriented. The way it initiates its strategy by putting the customer at the core of everything it seeks to do and the way it is felt in the hard structural aspect and the soft behavioral aspect uh, through a customer centric clearly defined uh, DNA. The third level is one of the most critical aspects of scrutiny and that is the capability based approach. How an organization implements the uh, approach for value creation and how it deploys distinctive capabilities or understands where the areas that need to be distinctive are and how it can depend on core capabilities that drive value creation and impact effectively and hopefully competitively on the end customer. The fourth uh, level is very much an extension of the third level, which is to adopt the results orientation by measuring the impact not so much from the mundane operational micro basis, but also, but more importantly, from the point of view of how the deployment of capabilities in value creation impact through outcome-based value felt from the customer side, but also from a competitive enhancement side insofar as the organization is concerned. The fifth level of uh, scrutiny in uh, government excellence uh, model-based uh, assessment is innovation holistically driven to disrupt and to transform more importantly by delivering the immediate and the intermediate uh, objectives but also to guide the growth and development of the organization through disruption and through the power of exploiting future opportunities. So future orientation can only happen if an organization has got the four previous levels well controlled, well defined, well managed, uh, well uh, taken care of in terms of constant learning, development, uh, transformation and so on uh, and so forth. Mm -hmm.